incredibly important, but we can even look at using that, that intuition in the existing thing. So um, you brought the example in the documentary about um, kind of, uh, enforcement of police tickets using TomTom data. Mm -hmm. um, you could frame this around a simple thing like parking enforcement. Right? We're now getting to the, to, to, the, to the place where we can perfectly enforce parking tickets. Right? Our, the meters themselves are using satellite cameras. We can actually um, give a ticket the moment anyone deserves a ticket. And the <laughs> question comes up, should we have perfect parking enforcement, mm -hmm. right? And, and so you, it doesn't have to be online. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be um, kind of a, a, any kind of um, meta frame. Mm -hmm. It's what kind of what kind of society do we want to live in? Do we want to live in a society with perfect park, parking enforcement? So maybe the question, maybe the answer to that as a society is yes, we like we like parking spaces or something. But you can extend this to what about rights with regards to engaging in activities that might be discriminatory? What about things around should you be able to break the law a little bit? You know, so, so a lot of the laws on the books weren't legal at some one point, and people had to explore and push the boundaries to determine, well, this should be a right. We should make this legal. And so you know, now that we have live in a world of perfect enforcement, due to technology, what should those social norms be? I think that's kind of the transition. Can I just add really quickly, of course that presumes that <coughs> law enforcement or other entities that are using these new systems of surveillance actually know how to use them well. So, Colin, you know, one of the things that I thought was really interesting in the film was, that, you know, a lot of debates, a lot of political debates in Washington on these issues. Sometimes, you know, if you were going to I guess, stereotype them a little bit, you have movements that are saying, well, the, the corporations have, have, have too much power, and, you know, maybe you would tag Occupy or something like that. Is that a theme? And then on the other side, you have perhaps the Tea Party saying, no, 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 it's the government. Um, and obviously the thing that comes through so strongly here is, you know, the real problem is that we have when they're, when they're working together. Um, and, and there was a line uh, that really struck, I think it was Chris Wayne who said it, and, and he, he says in the film that the, the government is using the existence of terms of service to justify the surveillance state that we now live in. Uh, and, and that really resonated with me. And I, and I thought, I wanted to ask you sort of the last question, to, to unpack that a little bit and, and, and sort of share some of uh, your revelations in, in making the film about those connections. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's just been a very cozy relationship for a very long time. Uh, when you when you have a corporate interest that can make billions and billions of dollars off of collecting user information, you have a government interest that's able to suddenly get something it's wanted for a very long time, which is unprecedented access to all of its citizens' uh, information in virtually, potentially real time, uh, you have a dangerous combination. And so, uh, I think giving uh, corporations like Google or Facebook, any of these guys, a, a, a free ride from this, saying that they're not accountable, I mean, they can pass the buck, but certainly they have some culpability in this. Um, so, so in reality, you know, these terms and conditions reveal the nature of the trade and, uh, and have just been sort of sitting there as this, as this uh, legal tactic uh, to enable what's been going on. And I think that's what Chris is really kind of getting at there. Um, and I think seeing that for what it is, and, and, and we see trust eroding. We see trust eroding in, in Europe and worldwide right now in, in some of these uh, organizations where they say, well, anything that's based in the U.S., maybe we don't want to use right now. Um, but I think to, to, to tie this into your last question, I think that the process needs to be sort of threefold. We need to start putting pressure on these companies uh, for change, to start changing their behaviors, to start changing what they're doing, and to be m more transparent with us. It's going to take regulation. Um, it's not just going to happen through innovation, which is the third thing. So we need pressure, innovation, and regulation. I think all these th three things need to work in tandem. Um, there are people in this room who are smarter than me at this stuff who probably have the answers uh, in terms of what that regulation exactly needs to look like. But, but certainly, um, you know, the Constitution needs to apply in some way online, and we need to figure out exactly what that looks like. Well, I think that's a great place to leave it for some questions from the audience. Do you want to ask, is, is Congressman Kucinich still here? Well, if he doesn't mind me putting him on the spot, <laughs> and Amy, so please feel free to defer, but uh, since we do have the pleasure of someone with such an, an inside view of how things uh, happen, I, I would love to hear from you, sir, um, a little bit of a taste of what things are like in Congress on the inside. Are these issues being discussed? Uh, how is that playing out uh, in your experience? I don't, I, I, I don't think I need a mic. You could probably... <laughs> <laughs> Years of experience. 
you know, I, I left Congress in January, but I, I, I was uh, elected to Congress in 97, or took office in 97. I was there on 9-11. I was there on October 22nd when, uh, of 2001 when the Patriot Act came to the floor of the House. We had 12 hours of hearing, and then at the last minute they swapped a bill.